Beyond personal protective equipment such as your lab coat and gloves, there are other ways of protecting yourself and your colleagues in the laboratory setting. Uh, containment is, is really what I'm talking about. And there are different types of containment. There's a container, which of course keeps whatever you're working with in where it's supposed to be. There's the biosafety cabinet, which is a different type of primary containment. It keeps the agent inside the space through airflow controls and other mechanisms such as filtration. Another type of containment can actually be found in the centrifuge. There are many different centrifuge models, but you can see that this one has an O-ring gasket so that when you close this, it's a contained zone so that if something happens, it's all protected inside and not going to release out into the environment right away. You have some time to identify what the problem is and try to address it. So biosafety cabinets are something that most researchers are used to and use either for tissue culture in a sterile environment or for pathogen work where they need to really keep um, the pathogen inside the biosafety cabinet. Either way, a lot of people actually don't know how the biosafety cabinet works and without understanding the mechanisms, it's hard to know how to really set it up and what to do inside the biosafety cabinet. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. This is kind of the best case scenario for a biosafety cabinet when you're getting ready to work. You can see there's barely anything in here, and that's, that's really a best practice. Uh, it gets cleaned every time you start, you bring in what you need, and when you're ready to remove it, you would decontaminate it with whatever disinfectant you're using and return all of those items back to their shelves that were unused. Um, so really what you want to try to look for is a biosafety cabinet that always remains this empty. What we recommend under most, most circumstances would be a 10% fresh bleach, which we understand has the potential for pitting the stainless steel. So to prevent that, there are really two steps. First of all, you want to use a drizzle bottle as opposed to a spray because the drizzle is really going to focus the bleach onto the, the area that you want it and not circulate it through the entire biosafety cabinet. Uh, the other thing that you would want to do is follow that with an ethanol rinse, and the ethanol will wipe away the bleach um, residue and keep it from pitting.